to be ready to go. We say ready, set, go. Right now, make sure that you have those critical documents, the critical stuff that you need. Have it ready. Put it in your car. And when you hear go, go. That's the kind of warning thousands of Californians were woken up to as a pair of fast-moving wildfires closed in on them. Tens of thousands of people have already been forced from their homes. And here's why. The first fire began yesterday evening north of Santa Paula, California, and it grew fast and furious. By midday today, it had spread over 200 square kilometers in Ventura County, including the city of Ventura itself. About 100,000 people lived there. At least 150 structures, including homes, were burned to the ground, and California declared a state of emergency. But then things got worse. A second fire broke out at around 3.30 a.m. local time. It burned into Los Angeles County, including the northern neighborhoods of L.A., forcing the evacuation of 2,500 homes. Those are two out of several fires burning in the region right now. And CBC's Kim Brunhuber saw the extent of it all firsthand. He spent the day near the flames in Ventura County. They may call it the Thomas Fire, but you get the sense as you walk in the smoky, blackened landscape that there isn't just one fire, but hundreds, thousands. Here, moments ago, a tree burst into flame. Here is a field on fire. Here, firefighters have been on their feet for more than 12 hours, hopping from one set of flames to the next. At one end of the city of Santa Paula, the fire has come and gone. 200 meters away, this family waits, anxious for news. They evacuated their home yesterday in the dead of night. It was behind us and it was in front of us. So we were trapped in it, so we had to get out. Yeah. You're basically surrounded on surrounded. that side and this side. Right. They came back this morning to see if their house was still standing. I came from that direction, so they asked me. A small little house, yeah, and then a, a bigger house next to it. Yeah. So both of those have burned. Yeah, I'm sorry to, to say that was that yeah. was yours. Yeah. Oh man. Thank you. Sorry about that. There's just one of more than a thousand homes lost in this parched land. Too much wind and not enough water. These topography wind-driven fires are just impossible to to get ahead of. There's not enough resources, and um, you know. It, yeah, it, takes, it takes the entire mutual aid system to even put a dent in it. If he sounds hopeless, maybe it's because he too lost most of his home last night. There's one right there. Trying to boost morale are Marlene Dionisio and her friends with their homemade signs. <laughs> to be honest, I was really scared of what was going on and then I saw all these firemen coming in from different cities and stuff and I really want to show them that we really appreciate what they're doing for us. Here in the middle of the hot zone, you come across ghosts in the smoke volunteers fighting the flames as best they can. With this smoky eclipse, it's hard to see, hard to breathe. It's raining ash. There's fire all around. Even if you can't see it, you know it's there. I leave the part of town where the fire is, head towards where it's going. At the other end of Santa Paula, a frantic rush to evacuate to get residents on the road before the fire beats them to it. You're not scared, man? No, español. Tienen uh, miedo? Are you scared, I ask her? Yes, she says. Not for me, but for the children. She's right to be scared. See these hills there? The flames have grown visibly in just the time I've been watching them fanned by these monster winds. On the roofs, residents like Joe Pacheco are trying to protect their homes. No, I've never seen anything like this since I've been here. Been born and raised here and never have. So Pacheco keeps watering, hoping for an early Christmas miracle with fire on both sides and closing in. Kim Brunhuber, CBC News, Santa Paula, California. All of that devastation comes near the end of the worst wildfire season in California history. In October alone, at least 43 people were killed and more than 10,000 buildings were lost as aggressive wildfires swept through wine country. And the big worry tonight is we may not have seen the worst of it. Now, meteorologist Johanna Wagstaff has been tracking this for us. And Joe, can you start by explaining why this year has been as bad as it has been? 
Well, Andrew, a couple of unique weather conditions have come together to sort of create the perfect storm for explosive fires. First of all, the Santa Ana winds have been in full force, drawing up hot, dry desert air and moving it towards the coast where it races through the valleys and inlets, heating up and speeding up to create those explosive fire conditions. We've also had a lot of vegetation growth after a record wet winter followed by a very hot summer for California, and that dried out all the brush, basically creating fuels for these uh, fires to burn through, Andrew. And so, Joe, look into the, the future for me, if you could. I mean, how much worse are we expecting things to get from here? Well, unfortunately, these Santa Ana winds are going to be in place for days. We could be talking hurricane force gusts over the next few nights. Unusual to see this in place for so long. On top of that, a huge high pressure system is in place from British Columbia through to California. No rain in the forecast for almost two weeks. Again, a very unusual setup. All of these factors will likely be amplified uh, by climate change, unfortunately, as we move uh, forward in time, Andrew. All righty. Thanks, Joe.